There are very few absolute rights or wrongs in audio, but the two ultimate must-dos are 1. Satisfy your client, 2. Please the market. So either you're working for a client who will be pleased to pay you if they like your work, and they'll ask you again, or you're selling directly into the market for audio, on CD, streaming, or even vinyl or cassette. If people like your work, they'll buy it, or play it more often. More streams, of course, equals more money for you. So what about loudness? What's right, what's wrong, and what's going to please your client or market best? The answer to this is seemingly simple. Minus 14 LUFS for YouTube, which used to be commonly stated as minus 13, minus 14 LUFS for Spotify, minus 16 for Apple Music, minus 23 for broadcast in Europe, minus 24 for broadcast in the USA. Done. But let's look at YouTube in more detail. Yes, the loudness standard is minus 14 LUFS, LUFS. But that only applies to video soundtracks that are at or above minus 14 LUFS. If the soundtrack is quieter than that, YouTube doesn't turn it up. Let me set a benchmark for loudness, Metallica. I might have chosen a track from Death Magnetic, which is reputed to be the loudest album ever recorded. But I chose Enter Sandman because I think it's a more reasonable reference as a loudish track. So, if I download the video file, bypassing YouTube's player and measure the loudness, using the Waves WLM Plus loudness meter, I get minus 8.3 LUFS. That is loud. But if I capture the audio via the YouTube player, I get, guess what, minus 14 LUFS. So, by experiment, we can see that minus 14 LUFS is YouTube standard. Minus 14 LUFS is, by the way, still quite loud. So this means that everyone is uploading their videos with the audio mixed to minus 14 LUFS, right? Um, not quite right. Let's consider Audio Masterclass videos. Now, personally, I would like it to be that someone could watch a Metallica video playing back at minus 14 LUFS, then click through to an Audio Masterclass video at a similar loudness. If the Audio Masterclass video is quiet, a lot of people will think there's something wrong. Fine. If I record a podcast and make a video version for YouTube, I can set the level to minus 14 LUFS. I'll have to use some limiting to get the level that high, but it will still sound OK. No problem. But what if I want to make a video demonstrating compression on drums? Drums are very peaky, and an uncompressed recording of drums could typically come in at minus 24 LUFS. I've just measured that as an example from a recording I made in Abbey Road Studio 3, even if the audio peaks at 0 dBFS. So, if I want to make a before and after demonstration of compression on drums, then the level can be no higher than minus 24 LUFS to avoid limiting the uncompressed audio and therefore invalidating the demonstration. That is 10 dB below YouTube's standard level. So, I thought, maybe I should take a look at what other people who comment on Pro Audio on YouTube do. They are experts whose opinions I respect, even if they sometimes differ from mine. So, without naming names, here are a few LUFS levels I measured from different creators bypassing the YouTube player and getting as close to the uploaded version as possible, in random order. Minus 11.5, minus 16.8, minus 17.7. Minus 16.6, minus 20.8, minus 16.2, minus 23.7. And one of my own, for comparison, minus 29.1. So we can see that this uninvited panel of audio experts, plus myself, has most definitely not come to a conclusion on what the right loudness level is. The loudest at minus 11.5 LUFS is clearly too loud. Here's what the waveform looks like. You can see how squared off it is, indicating intense limiting. The peak level is minus 0.8 dBFS. Some of the other soundtracks are too low in level because they are below minus 14 LUFS, and also below 0 dBFS and minus 2 dBTP. Minus 2 dBTP is the true peak level specified for broadcast in the USA. They could have been louder at no detriment to audio quality. Now, my video at minus 29.1 is the quietest of all. 
This isn't something that I'm boasting about, it was essential. The video demonstrates EQ on kick drum and I didn't want to use limiting at all. The true peak level is minus 1.2 dBTP, which would be safe for broadcast in Europe, if not the USA. So apart from that odd 0.2 dB, it could not have been any louder without limiting. So do I have a conclusion? Well, yes, on one point, the videos I've measured are popular and are clearly pleasing their audience, despite being extremely varied in level. That demonstrates that what matters to the audience is the content, and they're quite capable of turning up or turning down their monitor level control to suit their individual preferences. On deciding a suitable level for YouTube, well, this is tricky. I could go for consistency, but certainly for the way I prefer to make demonstrations, which is not to use limiting to achieve more loudness, I would have to set all of my video soundtracks to a very low level. Or I could set the level to suit the nature of the content, higher for speech only, lower for demonstrations. The level of this soundtrack, by the way, is minus 14 LUFS. If you'd like to comment and share your opinion, please do. The issue of loudness is far from settled yet, and the more debate we have, the sooner we'll come to a solution. I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.